Tom, good afternoon. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Nice of you to join us this afternoon. No problem at all. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, today we've got a short interview with Tom Tracy from SNG Publishing. And Tom and the team at SNG, they've had some uh, really good growth through uh, the last four, four to five weeks during the uh, coronavirus lockdown. And we just got Tom on just to a uh, quick interview, just introduction into his business. And he's going to explain some of the ways that uh, SNG have adapted to um, running offline activities and bringing that all online through Zoom. So, Tom, just a brief introduction, who you are, what you do. It'd be great, just for our audience. Yeah, of course. So, I'm Tom. I'm the digital editor at SNG Publishing. Uh, so, we're basically a publishing company. Um, we've got three titles. Each of them are aimed at students and apprentices studying. Um, so, we've got <clears throat> HIP, which looks, goes for plumbing and heating students, uh, Sparks for electrical students, and Concept Hair for hair and barbering students. Um, so, our company, we, we publish a magazine three times a year for each title. Um, we run a Prince of the Year competitions on each title as well, which is a national competition all around the UK to find sort of the best student or apprentice in, in that industry. Um, and then we've got a website and social media, which I'm in, in charge of uh, looking at. So our main sort of target audience is learners in further education, um, lecturers, and then to a lesser degree, professionals in those industries as well. Okay, perfect. And so be obviously before the coronavirus hit, you know, the six months leading up to it, what, what was business like like then? What, what kind of activities were you doing? What kind of numbers were you getting on your website? And just what was the general gist of how things were going? Yeah, the last, the last six months, obviously, starting probably in September, that's, um, that's when things kick off for us. It's the new academic year, obviously. So that's our, it's, a lot, it's a time when a lot of people are seeing our brands for the first time when they're just coming to college and studying these, these things. So um, that's when we also start taking registration for the Apprentice of the Year competitions, which kick off in January. Um, so it's a big push on social media. So September is always a surge for us, um, pushing up till Christmas. And then January, we start the competitions. Then we get big hits on sort of, especially on social media and people registering on our website and things like that. Um, so it's, it's been really good. So this is the sort of the six months a year that's, that's bigger for us. But obviously this, uh, this lockdown's come at a bad time for us. We'd, we'd got most of the regional heats done on these competitions, but we, the finals were supposed to be in March and April and we've had to, had to postpone those now, which is, a big shame um, and also the print magazines that we we put out there was one there's one going to print today actually so it's coming out at the end of April and um, we're bringing that out digitally now instead of in print and we'll bring it out in print later in the year um, so it's just ways of adapting basically so our, obviously our audience aren't actually at college they're all uh, stuck learning at home okay okay perfect so the the offline events that you've been running how have you uh, adjusted to that how have you managed to to keep those going in an online way um so what we've been doing um the last few weeks we've been doing doing interviews on zoom actually with the people who are already in the final and um, we didn't manage to finish all the regional heats we we couldn't go to scotland so we'll have to do that later in the year um but we we got the guys on zoom we had a chat with them how they how they've been coping um how they found the competition that sort of thing we've been putting out clips on our social media um the final was supposed to be on uh, around now actually so uh so yeah we're still we're still making the noise about it and then we'll be pushing it again later in the year and finishing it off, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Okay, perfect, perfect. So you've had quite an interesting uh, six months with it kicking off in uh, September leading up to, to uh, February time. So what was your initial thoughts when you, when you heard that the coronavirus was going to start uh, affecting the business? What was your initial thoughts then? So I think we, 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 did a, we did an event the week um, before the lockdown was imposed and um, it, it was in Northern Ireland actually and they'd just started to impose the measures in Southern Ireland so I, I think I kind of expected at that point that we were going to put into, into a full lockdown I think I had a cough after that actually so I was actually <laughs> at home for, for the week and then it was the lockdown was imposed for everyone anyway but um, I think with, with our business it's, other than obviously what I've said about the, the events and the print magazines everything else so sort of we're quite flexible so we've all just we all got, went to the office took our Macs home and we've all been able to <laughs> work remotely I've probably got more done with uh, people not distracting me and things like that so uh, yeah yes. it's all about a lot of content we've been using uh, Dropbox that's what we use all the time anyway so for instance, all our files are on there um, regular Skype meetings and that sort of thing really so it's um, so we've adapted to the situation 
okay, okay. So you adapted, would you say you adapted quite late to it, like a few weeks before? You, you, were you pre- preparing anything back in January, February when it started to... No, well, we were, we were actually supposed to be moving office um, in March as well. So um, we, well, when the lockdown came in, I think we, it was when they said you could go out uh, in meetings of two. So uh, Celia, our, our owner, and, uh, and Phil, our editor, went and moved all the stuff from our current, old office to our current office, which I've not actually been in yet. So we just all okay. went to the office, took our computers home and been able to work from home immediately, really. Uh, so it's, so there wasn't really, from my side of things, any anything that changed that much. Um, I know the guys obviously had to postpone the competitions and things like that. So there's a bit of admin that side. But um, yeah, we're, uh, we're still running as, a, as normal as we can. Okay, okay, perfect. And now just, just coming back to the website then. So you... you the growth you've, you said you've had some uh, significant growth in numbers um so how were those figures looking uh before lockdown and how are they looking now compared to compared to before lockdown yeah so all, all our audience like the students and apprentices now they're obviously all having to work and learn from home so um as soon as the lockdown came place, we we basically set out to to provide sort of advice from industry bodies um stuff like mental health advice we got from from relevant charities and things like that um, and we've just been keeping keeping everyone up to date with the news of sort of businesses that are open and closed that are relevant to, to our audience. Um, and on the plumbing website, especially, it had a huge, huge spike. Um, I think the uh, I think last month the traffic on the Hip website was um, more than double its best ever month, um, which was brilliant. Um, I think the Sparks website had its best best hits for well over a year. Um, and the concept of our website had grown 30% on the month before as well. So in terms of website traffic, uh, it's been great. And then social media especially as well. Um, so Instagram is a big push for us because that's where a lot of the, the Gen Z audience are. And um, our concept hair website, had, our concept hair Instagram, sorry, had its, uh, its highest ever impressions last month. Wow. And the Sparks Instagram's grown at like a great 12%. It's crazy. I just, I just log on. There's new followers and new followers every day. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of us trying to provide content that's really useful and entertaining for our audience, and uh, it seems to be working well so far. Okay, okay, and that, that's obviously that's one of the reasons why, why I want to join here because across the board we're seeing website numbers are probably down twenty to thirty percent on average across all sectors. So, what why do you think it is that you guys have, have booked the trend and managed to literally double on on your plumbing side, for example? I think it's 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 the content is the main thing for us. So um, we've, we want to basically help lecturers with learning resources. So um, so we've got a Facebook group um, for lecturers and in that they can share exercises and things like that with each other. And we've had uh, lecturers send us videos of them teaching formulas and sort of plumbing, uh, plumbing information that we've been putting on our website. So we've made a page, like a coronavirus resource page, and it's got tons of tutorials. It's got links to all the quizzes we've got. Um, we've been putting, so we use Kahoot, uh, it's like a multi yeah. quiz platform. Uh, we've been putting daily challenges on social media for that as well. Um, and people can start trying to beat each other and get onto the podium and that sort of thing. So we just, we've been trying to basically tailor what we do. I mean, it's the kind of stuff we do anyway, but ramp up what we do, um, and help out the lecturers who are all having to teach their students remotely anyway. Okay. Okay. That all makes, makes perfect sense. Obviously you've mentioned some of your results have been that, uh, numbers have doubled and your Instagram's growing growing uh, consistently yeah. is, is there any advice you give give to our audience and obviously you're you're in one specific sector and our clients across yeah. all, all different sectors but is there any you know if you had three three main tips to give what would they what would they be I think I think engage with your audience because they're obviously they're at home and a lot of people have been furloughed and a lot of people haven't got things to do so this is a great time to remind your customers that you know you're still there um, another tip I would give is um, if you've got the ability to offer any, so if you offer a service, if you can offer gift vouchers or anything like that, that your customers can use when you are able to reopen fully, then this is something that obviously you can get some income from that still. And then you can, uh, you can still be engaging with the customers. You can still be selling things to them and you can still be shouting out that you're still there. And then when they come back, obviously they've got the voucher to use. Um, Another one, I think um, well, what we've been trying to do is get involved, get involved in challenges and things like that. Just engage, engagement is uh, is key at this time. I think 
to sort of keep a community of your your customers and your audience. So we've done things like a uh, self-isolation inspiration challenge where we're getting people to sort of send in uh, clips of what they've been doing now that they can't, uh, now that they're not on the tools and things like that plumbing. So uh, we've had people, um, I think when it first started, there was one, one chap who sent us a video, he was playing Monopoly with his kids, but they were using toilet roll as money instead of <laughs> the Monopoly money. So yeah, I think just helps spread the positivity. So I think people remember that when, uh, when everything's back to normal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that leads nicely on to, to the next point. When you say back to normal, I mean, how do you vision the next, next probably three months? How do, how do you visualize that going in your strategy, changing to adapt to that? Have you got plans in place or are you just going to adapt to it? Um, so it's, it's a bit of both really. Like obviously you can't really tell what's going to happen, whether, cause I think for us, um, obviously I don't, not, not an expert in this area, but whether, when things start to reopen, it's colleges and schools that come back earlier than other sort of establishments, then that changes because our audience will then be back more to normal than, uh, than before. Um, so it's a case of still, still letting people know we're there, still reminding them that the competition's obviously got to finish and then keep providing any content that they're going to find useful, like education content, entertaining content, that sort of thing. Um, probably a case of, doing things like this, this Zoom call, um, doing some Zoom interviews for ourselves, um, perhaps Instagram lives and things like that. There's, uh, there's things that we've got in the plans, if, uh, depending on how long this goes on for. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine it's going to be at least another, another three months before we start to get back to some sort of uh, normality. And I guess the, the final question would be, how do you think this has changed moving forward compared to where you were January, February? And what you've gone through the last three to four weeks, how do you think that's going to change you moving forward, your approach to marketing during the next like three to six months? I think we've, I think as well, I mentioned Instagram before and Facebook for videos for us has gone through the roof as well. Um, so it's changed perhaps, obviously new videos were important before, but it's probably for me made me realize how, uh, how important video is as, sort of, as a tool for, uh, for reaching your audience. Um, I think it, it grew like 257% on the previous month on Facebook. So we've been putting tutorials that pe- we get people to send into. It's user-generated content. Um, okay. They send it into us and then we share it. So it's like tutorials of how to do certain hairstyles and things like that. And um, that's gone down really well. Um, we've started sharing content in fa- relevant Facebook groups as well. Um, so there's certain hairdressing Facebook groups where people are f- far more engaged on there than on your general Facebook and um, that's something new that I've started doing and that's seen a big rise. So those are things I'm definitely going to take into account after, uh, after this is over. Okay, okay. So maybe some quite fundamental changes to the way you market in the future? Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some, uh, some tips I've taken on board from this uh, period. Okay, okay. And then jumping back, you mentioned uh, the use of Facebook video. So what, I know you mentioned you're doing how-tos and tutorials. Is there any specific style of video, specific length of video? How are you getting people to engage with it? Is it titles or? Yes, it's tweaking, it's a range really. We've had sort of some um, videos where they've been sort of 27 minutes long and then there's some okay. that are really, um, so that's showing you every single part of the like hairstyle. Um, and then there's some where they've time-lapsed certain bits of it so that they're nice and condensed, like less than four minutes long. Um, those are the more successful ones, but they've all been, they've all gone down really well actually. Um, all sorts of ranges. It's sort of, it's offering a mix of things really. Um, it's just, it seems to be working for us at the moment, putting videos up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because obviously video content's being pushed left, right, and centre. Now. It was being I had a quite a big push before all this happened. So, uh, Facebook video, Instagram video. Are you finding one one platform's working better than the other? Um, so, face, Facebook gets bigger hits than us, despite having less. Uh, followers but I think that's because like I said we're used to the Facebook groups and things so our videos are getting shared into lots of groups that we're not even in and then just the numbers um, go really quick I think there was one I put on on Friday um, and I came back on Monday and it had uh, 5,000 views which like, for us is a, is a high amount compared to sort of what a, norm, a normal video would get and that was just over a weekend um, and that was just I looked how many shares it had it had tons of shares so it's, I think shareable content so we, we tagged sort of the people who were involved in the video and the products used and things and they start sharing it and it just oh, okay. like that so it's through tagging um and the people who are sending us videos sharing our stuff that's that's always the way that gets us the biggest hit both on web traffic and social reach 
Okay, okay, that's perfect. No, th- thank you, time, Tom. Really appreciate that. Uh, is there anything else you want to add, or anything I should have asked you that you think I haven't asked you, or anything you want to share that might be? No, no. Just um, I was just going to say the only other thing we've sort of done is uh, we've we've actually just launched a TikTok account. Oh, okay, now, how are you finding TikTok? So is it that's quite a young audience? Yes. yes. So, um, obviously, we've already been gendered. There's probably a lot of them on there. So it's uh, kind of getting to getting to know what content works on there at the moment. It's very short videos, um, between 15 seconds and a minute. So um, yeah, it's a case of dipping our toes in there at the moment and uh, seeing seeing what content we can create that works on there. Okay, so what you do? Are you just rehashing content you've got on Facebook and just making it work for the? 15 to 60 second time limit or what are you doing there exactly? yeah, it's, a, um, it's a load of sort of archive stuff I've gathered from the last few years that I've not really used on any other platform that actually is now really useful so like when I've been on days at like um, construction and company and power tool days where they've like done little short demos of their tools it's not stuff I've used that much before but it's like perfect little clips to use on, uh, on TikTok um, and then on the hairdressing side it's a lot of user generated content as well, so little short videos. So, for some reason, they absolutely they absolutely love washing people, uh, washing hair and hair colours and things like that. So, uh, to be fair, it's quite satisfying. I'm not a hairdresser myself, but uh, watching that, you can see where the satisfaction comes from. <laughs> but I haven't gotten involved in any of the challenges yet, so I do watch some of these uh, some of these dancing challenges. Not not put myself through that yet. Okay, okay. Maybe in a couple of weeks once the uh, boredom <laughs> sets in. And j- j- there's just something you said there that stuck out to me that might be of value. You mentioned about going through your ar- archive for footage and editing it for TikTok. Are there any tools on the market or a- anything out there to help people who might not be um, experienced in video editing? Anything to just make the editing process simple? Yeah. Um, so for videos, I use Premiere Pro, which is more, it's a paid, a paid app, but there is apps like InShot on the Instagram. Okay. InShot, people use it for Instagram uh, quite a lot to splice videos. Go around. There's another one called Splice. Uh, and they're like really simple, user-friendly apps. I think they're free, but I think they do have paid, paid uh, features. Um, so they're really good. Um, and then I also use one called Unsplash, um, which is, it makes sort of, mosaics it's used, used mainly for instagram stories but it's the same dimensions as tiktok so you can use that as well and that sort of allows you to put multiple videos into one screen and then download that as okay. a short clip so that's stuff like that's really good they're, they're the sort of three apps i'm using at the moment on the on the phone okay perfect and we'll share the links to those apps uh, beneath this video on youtube as well so that's that's uh, that's useful uh anything else you'd like to add no i don't think so i think uh Keep keep pushing on, keep positive, and uh, see see where we go. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Tom, and that Tom, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll catch up in a couple of couple of months and see how you guys have progressed, and just catch up on what's working and what's not working in a couple of months' time. Brilliant. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.